Welcome to uh, the Boulder City, Nevada's video on proposed changes to the uh, city's landscaping ordinance. My name is uh, Michael Mays. I'm the Community Development Director for Boulder City, Nevada. And we want to thank you for uh, watching this video. The purpose of today's video is to evaluate um, some proposed recommendations by a consultant that the city has hired, Stantec, to look at our landscaping requirements. Our code uh, currently requires that commercial development and development of streets have certain minimum landscaping standards. Uh, the uh, landscaping standards have not been evaluated in many years, and this is an opportunity, particularly with um, the uh, conditions of uh, climate and the uh, drought that the city's been experiencing to reevaluate the required landscaping uh, for new development. So as you watch this video, just keep in mind that we're looking for your input. At the end of this video, we will provide you information on how you can get more information on uh, the proposed changes and how we can receive your feedback. So I'd like to turn it over to uh, Carrie Barrett with Stantec to provide an overview of Stantec's recommendations with our landscaping code. Thank you, Michael. It's a pleasure to be part of this process today and to work with you to present our ideas uh, before you. Um, as you know, we have been embarking on this project now uh, for about a year to look at what can we do to enhance Boulder City's uh, landscaping. And a lot of factors has come into play with this. I've been practicing landscape architecture for about 35 years, and I've been residing here in Southern Nevada for about 25 years. And so over that time, I have seen uh, a lot of changes incurred in terms of how we used to plant 35 years ago to, to today. And as Michael pointed out, um, there's been changes in our uh, environment that uh, warrants us to take a, a revisit the landscape plan and to look at opportunities to make a betterment towards uh, beautification for the city. What we were hired to do was to look at opportunities to assess the city's landscape. And in, in order to do that, things that we looked at were to understand uh, some basic uh, parameters to start our project. And that is, we basically looked at the city and divided it into some key areas uh, that are common. And they, and they include the commercial areas. And these are kind of based on what current planning reflects uh, for Boulder City. And they include commercial municipal areas, parks and open space, residential areas, public streets, your right-of-ways, and, of course, the historical district. Part of the process is to not only understand the unique characteristics of, of what what defines Boulder City, but also look at the ecosystem as a whole. And part of that project is looking at, as a community grows, the environment that's within it does change over time. And an example has a term called microclimate. What that is, is when you take a natural space like a desert floor and you put hardscape on it, which means parking lots, roads, sidewalks, rooftops, all that represents hard surfaces and that has an effect on temperature. When it heats up or cools down, it is, it's what's called the urban heat island effect. And, and that changes the character of the environment around that specific space called microclimates. We also look at this, the elevation that the city is at and we know this, the elevation of the city varies from basically where we're at City Hall, where we're recording this to lower elevations as you head down towards the lake, believe it or not, the temperatures will change quite a bit in that distance. We also look at surrounding land uses. We look at the surrounding mountains, the open desert, and those are characteristics that we look at in terms of how it could affect the environment within the city. And we also look at uh, what current temperatures are from a historical perspective, but we look at temperatures that are on file today for what's happening now. And then we're also looking at scenarios of what happens in the future. And of course, we also look at rainfall. And rainfall is a real critical component to our exercise because the, the lake is an important resource for our water. And it's important that we protect that. And to do that, it's important that we take water conservation seriously. And it's really key to how 
our sustainability into the future will work and play out. Other extremes if you, you've noticed in, in watching the news is you hear, you hear a lot about temperatures, you know, high temperatures. Well, the last, last summer we really hit some peaks uh, that actually uh, in August it was recorded as the second hottest summer ever recorded since records been kept for, for the metro southern Nevada area. That's important statistic for us to keep aware of. When you look at that kind of data and you look at it over a period of time, data is starting to show that the mean temperatures, which is the average between the low and the high, is changing and it's going upward at a slow pace, but it's changing. And what that means to us is it's having an effect on the existing plant materials and the landscape. And that's why we're looking at all of the plants as part of this exercise to reevaluate the plant palette for the city. So what's really a key to help control some of these factors is to understand the power of trees. Trees are really important. They have huge economic value. A tree on a property versus a tree not on a property have documented as much as a 19% change in value, which is really important. It has a huge impact on air temperature surrounding your home or public space uh, that will lower the temperature. It also has a huge role in terms of when we have storms, it reduces the runoff potential by absorbing the water. It absorbs pollution, takes the pollution out of air or the air that you know, is generated by cars, and it also absorbs carbon, which is a huge thing these days to uh, find ways to reduce our footprint on the environment. And then noise reduction. Studies have shown that when you do mass tree plantings, it will reduce the ambient uh, noise factor uh, on surrounding properties. So the other thing that trees bring to this equation is wellness. It, it has been documented to show that wellness of the landscape plays a huge role in terms of medical costs. People are responsive to nature and the more things we can do to improve that environment to bring nature closer to us, the better it is for us for our health. Studies have shown that it's truly beneficial to us. Places where you could walk under trees, you know, places to provide kids to, to invent and play. They're all important things that trees and landscaping can play. What does all this mean? You know, we talked about how the temperatures we've been seeing are starting to show warmer uh, gains. And so what it's telling us is that we got to be paying a little bit more attention to the type of plantings that we're using. And so there are people out there in the profession, in the nursery industry, that have been doing this for a while now, especially in the Southwest, where nursery growers have been working with arborists and horticulturists and biologists to look at plants and to graft new plant species and varieties that provide a lot of the benefits that we're looking for in terms of water conservation, surviving temperature, more temperature extremes. We're going to be presenting to you shortly some proposed plant materials as a reflection of all of these technological advancements in terms of improved plant varieties. Then another aspect of the power of plants is just what it could do around here. Simple things as treescapes where you line tr uh, trees on streets and shrubbery or, or put tr you know, large shade trees in parking lots. You know, that cools the asphalt and it does definitely creates a more inviting space for the public to be able to park in these spaces to provide some shade on key temperature extremes of the day. You know, trees and plant materials have huge economic value in terms of they provide not only the shade, but it accentuates spaces and creates really engaging environment spaces, you know, not only for your home, but businesses and just public spaces in general. Another key component of landscape is common areas. You know, we're doing more on the landscape architecture side, working with architects and design of new buildings to where we're now focusing on wellness as a key component in the design, where now we're providing outdoor spaces where we have natural environments of trees and shrubs where people can go out, congregate, socialize. Public parks are a component of that. Things we can do to provide more shade for sidewalks is important so people can go out there even during warmer times of the day. And also what it does for our businesses, you know, it has shown that, you know, it creates a more inviting business if you have really nice landscaping associated with it. It creates a very inviting space. So what did we do? So part of our work was to look at the city's planning. And what we did is we were able to divide it in key, key areas, as I mentioned earlier in this video. And that is obviously the historic district, which is the center of the city, the commercial municipal areas, 
residential, the parks and open space, which are the green, and the dashed lines represent the arterial streets around town. And so what we did in our recommendations is we developed plant lists based on these areas because it does several things for us. Number one, it creates wayfinding opportunities and it creates um, uh, areas that you know, really create you know, unique niches where, oh, I know this area of town, you know, and, and the landscaping really helps accentuate that space. So it really plays an important role. And it also allows us to look at uh, existing plant materials that we have found over time that what's, what was populated here in the 50s and 60s are actually showing signs of stress today. And so because of that, we are looking to more different plant species that are tolerable, higher range of extremes, so that we're not only looking at for what's now, but we're looking at in terms of what the future may present us with. And that's the whole point of this exercise, is to develop a plant palette that will be good for years to come. So the next slide I'm going to show you is an example of evergreen trees. On the left represents two trees that are found around the city are evergreen. Well, what we're finding is these trees, which is the pine and the cypress, are starting to show signs of stress just because of all of the temperature extremes that we've been experiencing. And so what we're proposing on the right side is plant species that do a lot of the same thing. They provide shade, they're evergreen, but they're plant species that are more conducive to our temperature extremes in our environment. Deciduous trees, we looked at that the same way. We looked at, on the left, are examples of trees that are around Boulder City, which are the sycamore, the raywood ash, the fantex ash, and the black locust. Those trees were seeing signs of stress, and it's not only here in Boulder City, but we're actually seeing it in Metro Las Vegas as well. Uh, the Fantex ash, for instance, is being attacked by a rare fungus, um, and it's spreading all over Las Vegas right now. You know, funguses and diseases spread just because, you know, the trees are weak and they're, they're really struggling to survive our current climate conditions, and so it opens them up to, you know, being attacked by these different problems. So what we're proposing is on the right is examples of deciduous trees that do a lot of things. They provide flowering for seasonal variation, greenery for the summer, whereas you know when they lose their leaves in, in the fall, the benefit of that is we still get cool winters. You know, it'll open up the tree canopy so the sunlight can come in and, and illuminate our homes and businesses during the day. Shrubbery. Shrubbery uh, examples on the left are the euonymus and the Japanese privet. Those are staple plants that you'll see around town. On the right side, uh, we're proposing some plants that do a lot of the same thing. They provide buffering, screening, but we're also suggesting plants that provide seasonal color, fruiting. It's great for uh, wildlife potential to help sustain wildlife in the city. And uh, color variation are all important things we look for when we buy plants in nurseries. So we're proposing some plants that are easily obtainable. And then accent plants. Um, accent plants represent a lot of the yuccas that you've seen, agaves. Um, these plants that historically wouldn't do well here in Las Vegas. But because of our temperatures have been changing ever so slowly upwards, uh, a lot of the plants that really thrive in lower elevation climates like Phoenix and Tucson are really starting to uh, gain root here in Las Vegas and Boulder City and they're able to sustain our winters. And so what we're finding is because of the warmer temperatures, these plant materials are now able to survive and do well, which is a good thing. So at this point, I'm going to turn this over back to Michael so uh, we could go through some questions and some suggestions. Carrie, thank you very much. Um, it's at this time that we are looking for your feedback. It's very important that with any proposed changes to the city's uh, landscaping ordinance that we have community input in that process. So as you can see, um, we have some questions that we want you to consider and we encourage you to go to the city's website. You can uh, type uh, landscaping plan update and find out more information and find the specific proposed landscaping recommendations by Stantec for each of the zones within the community. And as you're reviewing that, consider these questions. Do you agree that the uh, city uh, should require landscaping based on community zones? Um, do you agree with Stantec's uh, landscaping recommendations for each zone? 
Should the city continue to require trees at the front of commercial properties? And should the city require landscaping for a new single family development? And with that information, we encourage you to send your questions and comments to comdev at bcnv.org. You can also call the Community Development Office at 702-293-9261. And again, thank you very much for your uh, viewing of the video and your participation in this process. Mm -hmm.